Hello, everybody. I am Chef Sophie. It is my pleasure to cook with you today. I'm very excited. We will be cooking um, art scenes, um, which will be a lot of fun, create some beautiful artwork, and it will also be delicious and edible. So we'll make a few art scenes and also a fruity salsa. Mmm. So for these recipes, you will need about three kiwis, a half a cup of grapes, a little more for our art scenes, roughly two bananas, about six to ten large strawberries. You'll also need a mango, a lime, two Granny Smith apples or whatever apples you have handy, and some fruit jam. You're also welcome to add in blueberries, melons, watermelon, any kind of melon or pineapple you have. So grab the fruit that you have handy and we will get cooking. So our equipment is super easy today. We'll just need a cutting board, a knife, kid-friendly knives work great, um, as well as a, a medium-sized mixing bowl. So I'll give you a moment to grab your ingredients and meet, be, meet me right back here so we will get started. I'm going to turn my camera screen down so you can see what I am doing here. So we'll start with our first art scene by grabbing a few grapes. Our first art scene is a hungry, hungry caterpillar. So we're going to cut the grapes in half lengthwise. So I get my bear claw here, rawr, and because the grape is tiny, I may not use my whole bear claw, but just my index finger and thumb and making gentle sawing motion back and forth. Once I've sawed back and forth, I'm gonna switch my grip to a troll bridge and saw slowly back and forth, being extra cautious of my fingers until I have two halves of the grape. And I'm going to do that a few more times so that we have enough for our hungry caterpillar body. So if you're new uh, to Sticky Fingers, we create a new original recipe every week. Everything from Pokemon pasta to bunny pancakes and hummus critters pad thai, cupcakes, you name it. All of our recipes are 100% nut free um, and are adjustable to um, fit any dietary consideration or concern you might have. And if you like making these art scenes today, you will absolutely love our Food Art 101 class that begins tomorrow, Thursday, April 8th. And that class will be taking place with Chef Dylan. It's taking place on Thursdays throughout the month of April from 3.45 to 4.45 Mountain Standard Time and 4.45 to uh, 5.45 Central Standard Time. All right, beautiful. So you have a few grapes here. Now, you'll align them on the plate to make your hungry, hungry caterpillar. This may be something you're familiar with, right? I don't think our, our caterpillar will even make it to be a butterfly. I think he's going to look way too delicious um, and he's going to get eaten before he has the chance to, to become a butterfly. So you can arrange your grapes to make your caterpillar and then we need a face. So if you want to grab a strawberry and go ahead and use that gentle sawing motion to cut off and discard uh, the top. And then from there you can cut it lengthwise or you're, you are the chef. I empower you to get creative here. There's our, our face for our caterpillar. 
we need some eyes. You're welcome to use um, raisins, possibly blueberries to uh, create a, a few eyes for our caterpillar. Get creative as you would like. This is the fun part. There we go. He's got, my caterpillar's got some big buggy eyes. Gonna bring it on up so you can see there. Who knows, maybe he's he's walking along in some, some grass. You're welcome to grab some lettuce. I, I encourage you here to, to get as creative as you would like with your caterpillar, maybe adding an orange slice or some mango. Um, if it's a big, if it's a nice sunny day outside, there we go. There is our hungry, hungry caterpillar who also looks very delicious as well. So that's our first art scene. Art scene number two is going to be a turtle. In Hawaiian, this is referred to as a hono. So for our turtle body, we need a kiwi. So grab your kiwi, and if you notice, it feels really fuzzy. And this is actually to uh, protect it from bugs. Bugs will land on the fuzzy part and think, oh, this kind of this kind of tickles, this kind of feels weird. And so they'll fly away to, to find something that doesn't tickle them as much. So it is a protective mechanism, but we don't want the fuzzy part either. So. Find both ends of your kiwi. So we're going to cut off both ends and you can use that by grabbing your bear claw, gripping the fruit, using that gentle sawing motion back and forth. Now with the other end, even rotating it from side to side and then peel, peel off the skin of the kiwi. Again, it's that gentle sawing motion Get all the skin off until we're left with a delicious kiwi body. And this will be the body of our turtle or our honu. Once you have all the fuzzy parts off, we can go ahead and slice it in half. Here we go, we're making two, two turtles here today. You can go ahead and discard the fuzzy pieces. We won't be needing those anymore. And then for our, we have our body of our turtle. Now we need a head. So grab a grape. There we go, we have a head. And now we need some legs. So the main difference between a, a turtle and a tortoise um, is, or a sea turtle, right? Tortoises have, have uh, things that help them walk on land, whereas sea turtles have flippers. Um, and flippers, of course, help them swim. Now, turtles actually lay about 500 eggs, uh, sorry, 150 eggs each time. All right, so for our turtle body, before for our caterpillar, we cut our grape lengthwise. This time, we're going to cut the opposite direction. And this will be our turtle, our turtle, you can decide if yours is a sea turtle or a land turtle. But this will be for our arms, and then we need our legs too. So they have that many eggs because once they bury them in the sand, the sea turtles, they just walk away. They just leave all their their eggs to hatch and make it to the make it to the sea all on their own. And baby sea turtles actually their favorite thing to eat in the whole world are jellyfish. They love jellyfish. At least the Hawaiian green sea turtle does. So once you have your legs, your body your legs and your head, there you go. You can, you're welcome to um, add eyes. Again, get creative as possible. Looks like mine might be losing a leg. He might have had a shark attack. There we go. And there are your sea turtles. 
So those are the two art scenes that we are making today. Again, you are welcome to join Chef Dylan on Thursday. He'll be making uh, a lot of art scenes and having a lot of fun, both playing with food and also eating it, which is one of the best parts. All right, now to make our fruity salsa. So for our fruity salsa, we are going to start with a half a cup of grapes. A half a cup of grapes. Now if you haven't rinsed them, go ahead and rinse them off and then we will get to chopping. So we want all our fruit in our salsa to be chopped up in little tiny pieces. The tinier, the better. So once you have your grapes, you can just chop away. Again, being extra cautious of our fingers. This recipe doesn't call for any fingers, so we'll go ahead and leave those out. But we'll want to chop our grapes into little pieces as possible. So grapes are actually berries. Um, the, the word uh, berry, um, actually meant grape in the in, in old English and botanically speaking um, they are a, a berry um, because each fruit comes from a single flower on a grapevine so you think of strawberries you think of blueberries blackberries right you may not think of a grape as a berry but it is Fun fact here, someone once ate 205 grapes in three minutes. Wow, that's a lot of grapes in three minutes. And in order to do this, um, he had to pick each grape individually up, one by one. He didn't just shove them all in his mouth. He, he ate them one by one individually. It was a, a gentleman um, in Mumbai in India that ate 205 grapes in three minutes. Wow. All right, excellent chefs. Once you have your half a cup of grapes chopped up into itty bitty pieces, you can go ahead and add them on in to your big mixing bowl. Adding those right on into your mixing bowl and we will keep on shopping on. So next we need two kiwis and we will cut them much like we did before. So find the ends, saw the ends off. I like to use a twisting motion to, to get that end off and then remove the peel. No fuzzy parts for flies and no fuzzy parts for us. And then instead of keeping the body for our turtle, this time we're going to, again, just like we did with our grapes, chop it up into little itty bitty tiny pieces. Excellent, and you can go ahead and discard of your fuzzy parts. And we will do that again with our second grapefruit, cutting off either end, and then using that gentle sawing motion to get the fuzzy parts off. So did you know that kiwi fruit was named after its uncanny resemblance to the fuzzy brown kiwi, which is not a fruit, it's New Zealand's national bird, which is also called, uh, it's the fuzzy brown kiwi, which if you've ever heard of New Zealanders referred to as kiwis, maybe that's where this comes from. All right, beautiful, you have your kiwi. You can go ahead and add it to the bowl um, or just leave it aside as we continue chopping on. So next will be your two, uh, excuse me, one banana. We just need one banana. If you really like bananas, you can go ahead and add two. So we'll peel our, our banana and then again, chop, chop, chop. So interesting thing about bananas, 
A bunch of bananas is called a hand. And one banana, makes sense, is actually, it's called a finger. And the skin of the banana, the part we just removed, right? Normally you just toss it aside and because we don't want to eat that part, but it has many, many uses. Um, actually for mosquito bites, it's great. Um, or poison ivy, it stops the itching. You can also um, put the uh, banana skin on your teeth. Um, and it helps, it helps whiten your teeth if you're looking for a pearly white smile, right? So we want little pieces uh, with our banana. Um, you also, if you have house plants, you can um, run the skin over your house plants and that will make them look nice and shiny and beautiful. So while we normally just discard that part, there's actually many, many useful um, and, and handy um, things that we can, we can use the banana peel for. All right, I'm going to go ahead and add my kiwi and my banana into my big mixing bowl so I can make room to keep on chopping on. So after our bananas is our six to 10 large strawberries. So again, we don't want this green part. You can go ahead and slice that off, discard it, and then as little tiny pieces as possible. So in this recipe, you're really honing in on your chopping skills. Slicing, dicing, chopping, perfecting that technique with all of our fruit chopping. Maybe you even feel like a fruit chopping kitchen ninja. Hiya! <laughs> All right, so we'll continue uh, to chop our strawberries. Um, strawberries, interestingly enough, are actually the only fruit that wears their seeds on the outside, right? Check out all those seeds. So look at your strawberry and guess how many seeds do you think are on one single strawberry? How many seeds? There's, you know, it looks like there's quite a few, right? So on average, there's about 200 seeds, um, around, uh, around 200 seeds. So it's no wonder it only takes one bite for the, the seeds to get stuck in your teeth, right? With, with 200 of them, your, your odds there uh, are, are pretty good. <laughs> um, and Native Americans, um, ate strawberries long before uh, European settlers arrived. Um, strawberries are one of the first fruits that come around springtime and so it was such a treat and it was such a, a welcomed event to see the, the first uh, strawberries and um, they were you know freshly picked um, or they were even baked into cornbread which I found interesting, right? Maybe you think of putting jalapenos in your cornbread, but how do strawberry cornbread sound to you? Sounds pretty good to me. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be willing to try it for sure. And with all of our amazing fruits, strawberries included, so many amazing uh, vitamins, very high in vitamin C, and so powerful, they have antioxidants um, that are very, very helpful to the body. So our fruity salsa is like a power salsa today, power for the body. All right, beautiful job. So once you have your strawberries chopped, you can go ahead, you guessed it, add it into the bowl with our other fruit. So getting a nice mix of fruit here in our fruity salsa. We have a few more fruits to go. You're doing a great job. 
Next up is our mango. So we need about a half of a cup of mango. So the best way to chop the mango, I like to get the end off so it can stand up on all fours. Or it can, it can stand up straight. And then it has two different sides. The fatty sides are called the cheeks, the cheeks of the mango. And what we want to do is cut down the middle, but not hit the pit. And if you hit the pit, that's okay. It's the mangoes have a pretty big pit in the middle. So we'll cut, cut, cut one side and then the other side. And try to avoid the big pit. And we'll also cut around it and get all that delicious meat off the mango. So we have our two cheeks. Now what I like to do next is make knife cuts lengthwise and vertically down the middle. You have this, this beautiful pattern here. And then you can turn it upside down and use your knife to get all that delicious meat off. So we want our mango as little as tiny as possible. So we're not making it into anything pretty here, just kind of getting the meat off of the skin. So once again, using those lengthwise cuts, cut through the mango, and then get the meat off. Mm, mango is one of my favorite fruits. So many cool things about mangoes. They're actually um, the most popular fruit in the world are mangoes. Most popular fruit in the world. All right, so you continue to kind of cut around that big pit, find the pit, and then get the meat off as needed. And then, you guessed it, add it to the bowl. Uh, the mango is actually the symbol of love in India. And a basket of mangoes is considered a gesture of, a gesture of friendship. It's actually said that Buddha meditated under the cool shade of a mango tree. How cool. Uh, mangoes are related to cashews and pistachios. Who would have thought? All right, we're getting close here. Nice job, keep up the good work. Um, next, we are adding in our two Granny Smith apples. So again, that bear claw method, you know it, gentle sawing motion back and forth. And then from there, you'll want to chop, chop and dice, chop uh, sorry, slice and then dice into little tiny pieces. There's actually a really neat story behind the Granny Smith apple. Uh, Grandma Marie Smith was testing out different apples to be baked um, in her apple pie. She wanted a, an apple that was both delicious for tasting for eating and for baking. And so she would test out different apples and then throw them um, out her window. And about five years later, a beautiful apple tree um, grew and she took her apples to her farmer's market and they were so popular. They began to grow um, in popularity. And because of an apple's shelf life, it's great to be transported all over the world. Um, but apples are pretty genetically cool in that um, if you plant the seeds from this apple, a, a different type of, of apple will grow. That's why there's over 7,000 different variations of apples. So if you are eating a Granny Smith apple, that is actually uh, uh, from Grandma Marie Smith's apple tree all the way in Sydney, Australia. How cool is that? Nice, so you'll slice and dice and chop into little tiny pieces your apples and then add them into the bowl. Oh, look at all those beautiful colors and our sweet smelling fruit here. 
Nice. Adding in any other fruit you'd like, um, blueberries, pineapple, watermelon, right? Any fruit you like. You're the chef in your kitchen, so add in all of your favorites. Next, we're going to locate your lime and cut your lime in half. I'm going to switch to my troll bridge here, gently slicing the lime in half and then squeeze the lime. I hope you brought your muscles to the kitchen today as you squeeze that lime all over your fruit. And this actually helps keep your fruit from browning, right? Maybe you've gone to eat in your apple and it, all of a sudden it's, it's all brown and you think, oh man, I don't wanna eat it anymore, even though um, it, might not, it might still be good. So that's what the lime helps a lot with is the browning and our last step is to add three to four tablespoons of your favorite all fruit jam and then we'll mix it all up together and um, set it aside so all these delicious fruit flavors um, in your tasty fruit Salad, salsa will combine and get extra yummy. So add your jam, mix it up all together, and then you're welcome to enjoy maybe with some cinnamon chips, maybe with your hands, um, however you would like. But thank you so much for cooking with me. It was a pleasure to cook with you, and I hope to see you in a cooking class very soon. Thank you and have a great rest of your day.